Hi, it's Paul again. I just want to talk about localization today. So I've gone to the Unity's localization guide and there's a little installation guide here and it says to import this package. So I've done that and then onto the quick start guide. So I've basically followed this quick start guide and it's a pretty good guide. And I'll just sort of take you through that. There's a few bits in there that aren't that clear. So I'll just take you through those bits to make it a bit easier, should you want to localize something. So the first thing we have to do is, well, we'll create a UI. So I've got a little UI here with a title and a little inventory count and a little image of a flag. So the first thing to do is actually set up our localized database, as it were. So we come in here and we go to our settings, project settings, and then there's this localization setting here. Um, we need to add some locales. So a locale is basically a language. So it's not quite a country, so you can have uh, subtly different languages, for example, French and French Canadian. Um, we don't seem to have any in here, so I need to create some. So we go to the, the locale generator and I'm going to add uh, English. So again, there isn't a, a English British here, English US, it's just English here. I'm sure there's a United Kingdom, there might be one. Can't see it. Oh, English Singapore. So we do have some variants. So I'm going to go for English and Spanish just to start off with, and we generate the locales. So we have to put them somewhere. So for me, I'm going to just put them in my samples directory under the locales folder. Select that folder. So now I get English and Spanish. That's good. And then you can go to window. Trying to find where it is now. Window localization I'm looking for. Can't this into tools? No. Oh, assets. I think you can create a localization asset. Localization settings. So you can do that here. And then again, let's go into scripts, localization. Oh, I've already got one here. Uh, I'll just overwrite that one. Okay, and then we can use the localize tables. I'm just trying to think where I got that from. Let's just close that. Close that tab. Where did I get that from? Layout, no. I thought it was in here, localizations, no. Tools, component. I don't think it was from there. I'm trying to see where I got that from. Oh, perhaps it's just double clicking on this. Uh, okay. So that's just this tool again. Let's just flip back to the guide. So we create the localizations, we create the locales. I didn't choose a default locale. Create an asset table collection. Open window asset management localization tables. Window, asset management, localization tables. There we are. So I can now dock that up here. Prefer to do that. That's cool. So we've got our locales in here and we need to create a new table. So I'm going to deal with the title first. So I'm going to come in here and give this something like UI labels. That's my name. And I'm going to create a string table for that. So I again need to put that somewhere. So scripts, localization, tables collection. Okay, and the way localization works is you have a programmatic version 
of the text. So in here, I'm going to call this title. And then you have the different locales that we've got. So in English, I'm just going to say hi. In Spanish, I think it's just going to be hola. And let me just check that. I don't trust my Spanish. Yeah, okay. So that's fine. So we've got the English version and the Spanish version, but how does Unity know to use that? So we need to go to the title text. And then all you need to do here is go into the text property that you want to change and say localize. So then you get this localized string event component. It's already got English and Spanish. So it's pick, it's showing you the preview of what that's just going to look like. And then when we run this, so that's all we've done. Let's just run that up. So you can see in the game window, it says hi. So it's picked up the fact my default is English, so it's hi. But then if I move to Spanish, I get the hola. So that was simple enough. Okay, let's look at raw image next. So this is using um, obviously not a string table, so I need to create a new type of table for this. So we go to our new table collection and we could say something like uh, UI images. Create an asset table collection instead of a string table. And then again, we need to put that somewhere. So we put that in our localization table collections. So we add a new entry and this time the key is going to be something like, um, well, I'll call it flags, uh, country flags. And then in English, I'm going to pick, uh, what have I got here? I've got UK, yeah. And then Spanish. These are just sprites that I've got preloaded. Okay, so again, we go to the raw image now and we need to localize it. So again, all you do is you right click, you say localize. Um, that's a good point actually, in the title, how did it know? It managed to figure that out for itself, that's interesting. I wonder how it did that, it's quite clever. If you go to raw image, you need some way of mapping the raw image to the right table collection. So in here we can go, This it sees that the UI images is available, so you can open that and then you can just select country flags. And now it's got that mapping. Again, I'm not quite sure how it managed to do that for the text automatically, but there we go. Uh, you see there's a little preview here, we can't really see, it's not very good, it's, I mean it's still in beta, but you can kind of vaguely see that it's got some change. Um, yeah, so let's have a look at that. And you can see here at the runtime, the raw image, it's picking a texture out. So if we run now, you can see that the flag has indeed turned to English, we've got high and the UK flag, not English, UK flag. We speak English. And the Spanish and Spanish flag. So we've got text and graphics changing based on the locale. So that's good. So one last thing to do is you have 10 items. Now this is tricky because you've got something that's dynamic in the middle of a string. And you've also got um, a kind of pluralized problem here as well. So we'll have a look at how we can deal with that. So we need um, another string. So we come back here and bring up my string table. So I'm now add a new entry and call this something like inventory count. So you have 10 items. And my Spanish isn't up to this. So 
So a bit like a string format, what we want to do is make these smart. And then we can add a formatting to it. So we want to say that our inventory count goes in here. Oops. Right, so when we go to our inspector and we look at our inventory count, you may guess what we're going to do next. It's going to localize it. And then we pick inventory count. So you have inventory count items. Now what you can do here is if you open this up, you see it's got a debug and a preview and you can press the preview. And it tells us here we have an error parsing format, could not evaluate inventory count. So it's using reflection here. So I've got a script in here, example inventory, and it's just got a public property called inventory count. So if I add that inventory example to inventory count, now what will happen is if we preview, that's still not good enough. It's still saying I can't find inventory count. And hidden away here, which is the kind of missing step in the instructions, is this format arguments. And we can create a new argument in here and we can add that script. Now, if we go into here, look at our preview, you have zero items, so it's found it. And in Spanish, you go to preview, that looks correct to me. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. So that's kind of looking good. Let's run this up now. So you have zero items. You have, yeah, and then we can come into this date and say 99 and then change the thing over to refresh it. So that looks pretty good. Now, the problem here is plurals. So you have 99 items, that's fine. But if you only have one, what's going to happen? You have one items, <laughs> which is not great. Now the localization has a mechanism to deal with that, apparently. I haven't tried it yet, so let's have a go. So you go back into the guide. We go down to smart items. Okay, build, where are we? Right, now if we look at this example here, you can see it's got this thing, apple count, colon, plural, and apple, or apples. And this is all inside the curly bracket. So let me try and reproduce that. I'm going to push this off the screen, but I can still read it myself. So Apple count, that's going to be like the inventory count. So we've got inventory count in here. And we want to say that the plural is you have an item. So that's the English. And we want to or it. So when you aren't the single plural, we want to say items. I think that's what it's telling me to do. That format just doesn't look right to me. Let's have a look. Does this work? So back to our inspector. You have an inventory item plural items. So what does it reckon? That looks like can't 
can't help but think. It doesn't look right to me. Let's try it. You have zero items. You have an item. Ah, oh, it's worked. Is that a space in there? Why is there a space in there? Let's just come back to you have. Okay. So, because I've got space at the front there, maybe just take that off. You have zero items. You have an item. Yay, that works. So I don't know what the rules for plurals are in Spanish, so I'm not going to attempt that. That does raise an important point that when you are doing localization, not to rely on uh, Google Translate. Do actually try to get people that understand the language to do the translation for you. Otherwise, you end up upsetting people. So, yeah, that's a quick whistle stop tour of how to do localizations. Um, at least from an inspector point of view. the Using it from code is, again, slightly different, um, but I won't go into that right now. Okay, I hope that's been helpful. Thanks.